Right, I'm continuing on uh, another video about uh, the equipment that we have on board. So I'm just going to give you a quick description of uh, our Navionics setup on our iPad. So this is us on passage now. We're on passage from Blythe to Amble. Uh, that is our AIS unit, uh, the ICOM unit. Uh, and it gives you your standard target list. Uh, we've got nothing on danger list. These are all the vessels that are close in our area. But uh, I've also got it overlaid on the iPad. So this is uh, a Wi-Fi overlay with the information that's coming from the ICOM AIS. Uh, so in the iPad, because of the overlay from the ICOM uh, information, you can just click on these vessels Oh, that's interesting. One has disappeared. It was on AIS and now it's gone. That's us. Our passage, there's our speed, 4.7, 5 knots. We've just come out of Blythe, uh, which is there. Uh, come down the uh, harbour entrance, round the reef here, and now we're, we bore away because we've got a southerly wind. Uh, and we're under asymmetric spinnaker, which I'll show you in a minute. Right, so there's all the vessels that are in Blythe. Uh, there's one, the Norman Pacific. We heard them coming in yesterday. So there's their call sign, AIS. Closest point of approach is 4.9 nautical miles, uh, and the speed over ground is zero because they're uh, tied up alongside. So that's what's in Blythe, uh, and this is the vessel that's just behind us, going the other way. So that is the, looks like a, perhaps a fishing vessel. Yes, that's a fishing vessel because it's not got a name. It's one of the smaller vessels, it's Class B AIS. So the CPA on that is 1.2 nautical miles, and it's doing 6.5 knots, uh, course over ground, 179 degrees true. Uh, and we've just been, we've just gone past that. So uh, you can see that we're clear on the approach up to Amble. Uh, there's Coquette Island that we're just going to be uh, heading past fairly soon. But what makes this possible is a, is a Wi-Fi repeater. So the string of information, oh, there's those vessels again. There's the one that's behind us, the fishing vessel. There's the other one, the Solway Fisher. So this is another one, he's underway he or she is underway using engine. CPA, closest point of approach, 7.5 nautical miles. So the point about this is, it's really useful for um, navigation. We can use this in the cockpit as well as in the cabin, we can, whereas this is only in the cabin. We can't move this. So we can see this if we're on a night shift, we can watch to see what's going on without having to wake the, uh, who's on, whoever's on the sleeping. Uh, down below uh, and the length of this little line here gives you an idea of how fast it's going and also its direction uh, and if we were on a collision course that would go red uh, to warn us and there's also alarms that you can uh, that you can configure as well so it's really useful but what makes it uh, work is this thing now this is called a yakker uh, NMEA to Wi-Fi all you do basically is connect it to, to um, 12 volt positive uh, and the same ground source, uh, negative ground as your uh, ICOM unit. Uh, and then it takes the information, the NMEA information from the ICOM unit via this cable here uh, and it puts it out a Wi Fi signal. And then you can pick the Wi Fi signal up on any handheld device which is really useful for being able to transfer the information from there so that you can watch it anywhere um, uh, on board without having to come in and look at it in the cabin all the time. Um, so that's a workup of what we're doing. Uh, that's the navigation log for the trip so far. Uh, and we're under Spinnaker. We've worked out our tide times for Amble. Uh, we know what the channel is. I've already phoned them up. We know what our pontoon pre-booked berths are, where they are, they're on this finger down in here, F40 and 41, which is around about here. So we know where they are, uh, and we've got all the information off the Navtex, the barometer, 
uh, and we've just been discussing it with the um, with Blythe Harbour getting in and out. So you have to fall, you have to give them a call on VHF uh, just to get authorization to leave. So we've done all that, but that's the that's the setup that we use uh, in the cockpit, uh, and uh, it's very handy. The information overlay from the uh, AIS. That down a little bit. Right, so this is us now. That's what it looks like you know, uh, on on our gadgets, and this is what it looks yeah. like in reality. Doing it on that one as well. So that's the sea state. Uh, we've got a force three to five southerly, uh, and it's wind against tide, which is why it looks a little bit rough because the tide is coming. We're battering an adverse tide here. We're doing about five knots, but into um, quite a big tide because it's a new moon so uh, it's quite a decent tide and uh, Phil's doing his best to keep the spinnaker uh, inflated and uh, that's our kite up uh, and we've got it on a sock I don't know whether you can see that right at the top but uh, there's a spinnaker sock so we can um, drop it really quickly which is really useful uh, and you probably can't see this on the video, but we've got um, Cockhead Island Lighthouse that we're aiming for just off in the distance. It's probably about nine miles away. So, yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment, and uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, it hit me that um, you couldn't see that iPad Navionics screen very well in that last video. So here's just another shot of the uh, iPad Navionics and AIS overlay set up on passage. That's just out of Tynemouth uh, and all the green vessels there are AIS targets. Uh, direction and uh, is with the line and the length of the line is the speed they're going at uh, and if they go red then basically we're on a collision course with them so it's a very useful real-time addition uh, that we can use in the cockpit.